Hey everyone, welcome back to the dad section. Today we're going to be talking about what to expect in the first two months with your baby. But first, please make sure you do give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and of course subscribe by hitting that notification bell. That way you know when there's new content ready for you all to view. Also, please be aware that any of these products that I'm talking about in my videos are going to be linked down in the description below. Uh, so if you guys want to give that a look, that'd be great. But for now, let's get started in this video. So like my other videos, I just want to give this disclaimer out there that for this video specifically, all of this information that I'm giving is solely based on things that I've gone through and my wife's gone through in the past two months. Uh, by no means is this going to be exactly what you go through, but this is going to give you uh, a basic uh, outline, I guess, of what could be happening in the first two months uh, of life with your baby. So I just realized that I'm not trying to throw a blanket statement because I do understand that uh, everybody's situation is uh, entirely different. All right, so I'm going to cover the past two months into four different categories. And that's going to be appointments, milestones, routine, and of course, family that is visiting. So I'm going to start out with routine. Routine starts as soon as the baby is born. And if you're interested in a video in a more in-depth look into the birthing experience and the hospital experience, I'm going to have that link down below. But just know that routine includes feeding, changing, bathing, and sleeping routine. So just know that all of these four things are going to shift throughout these first two months and further on. So maintaining a routine is pretty difficult in the very beginning, especially whenever you're going to have family coming in and out. So it gets a little chaotic and a little hectic, but we're going to get further into the, the family portion towards the end of the video. But anyway, the routine was waking up every three hours uh, to feed him because he was premature. So he had, had to eat every three hours, couldn't go past four. Um, so that was pretty set in stone for us for the beginning, but the quantity at which he would eat and the time period on, on when we could wait to each feeding did increase. But this is going to continue all the way up to the two month mark. Uh, baths are also loosely fit into the routine category. Um, that's strictly because when the umbilical cord is still attached, you have to wait till it dries up completely uh, to do a full submersive bath. So you're going to be doing a washcloth bath or a sponge bath. So you're not going to get that full submersive bath. And then also, if you do have a boy and you decide to get a circumcision, then you're going to have to wait just a little bit longer. Uh, sometimes it does line up with the uh, umbilical cord falling off, but you might have to wait a little bit longer to do a full submersive bath. But just know that once that does happen and you're, you're cleared by the pediatrician to go ahead and do a full bath, then uh, it'll become a little bit easier to incorporate that into your routine. Another thing that's going to shift with the bath is going to be the location. So in the first month, uh, our baby, he was perfectly content being in the sink. He had enough room because he was a little bitty little guy. Um, had a little flower petal uh, that was cushioned that he could sit in. But um, as the time went on and he continued to grow, he hit his, his one month mark and he was starting to kick and starting to splash all these cute little things that he does. But he ran out of room in the sink because we have the two divided sinks instead of a nice farmhouse sink. So what we had to do was we shifted him to the bath into this little uh, seat that he pretty much has that he lays down in and he's able to do a full bath. So just keep in mind that possibly in, in the two-month period, the location of your bath is going to change. Another shift in location is going to be uh, sleeping arrangements, depending on how quickly you move your baby into their own room. Our original plan was to move him into his room at six weeks, start transitioning uh, out of bassinet into his own crib in his nursery. Um, we did opt in for a bassinet sleeping situation. There's nothing wrong with co-sleeping. Um, we just didn't want to do it because we thought it would be a little bit easier to shift him from his bassinet to his own room. So after about six weeks had gone by, we decided, okay, we're going to wait at least one more week because we were still kind of adjusting into our routine of getting the feeding down and the changing and kind of just reading his cues. But uh, we hit our seventh week and we decided, all right, it's time to start transitioning. And so the easiest way that we found to go about it was to do it during nap time. Don't go straight into it with a full night sleep because it's going to be harder. You're going to be on edge. You're going to be awake the entire night. So the more comfortable you can get him sleeping in the crib during the day, the, the better it's going to be for at night, the more comfortable he's going to feel and the more comfortable you're going to feel. One thing that I do have to say about routine that, that my wife has perfected, uh, practically made an art form out of it is she incorporated bath time uh, with the, the bedtime routine, which every time he has a bath, which is every other day, he starts to realize, oh, it's bath time. It's time to wind down. Mom's going to get me in my jammies. 
and then they just relax and then she puts them to sleep and it's awesome because it's becoming a lot more easy and and he's just transitioning a whole lot better than he was in the very beginning so do keep that in mind that you can do these little things that can help you at bedtime routine or even his bath time routine just kind of try to combine them and it's going to make life a whole lot easier and finally the biggest shift that you're going to have during this whole two month process is going to be whenever you do go back to work if you are interested in a a more in-depth look at what it's going to be like whenever you are transitioning back to work life and you're going to have to balance the the work and the family life uh, i'm going to link our video down here below it covers uh, that into great detail so please check that out but as you can see, the routine is ever changing. It's not going to stop at the two month mark. So just adapt and, and get more in tune with your baby and in tune with each other. And I would say that the best way to prep for this ever changing routine would have to be having great communication with your spouse. If you guys are on the same page, it's going to make life a whole lot easier. And make sure you have multiple plans together because plan A may not work out. So have plan B, have plan C mess around with it and just just try to find out what's going to work best for you guys but now we're going to move on to the pediatric appointments that you're going to have within these first two months so you have three total you're going to have the two to four day old appointment the two week old appointment and then the two month old appointment uh, that's the way it's staggered for us it might be a little bit different for y'all but you should have at least three in uh, three appointments in the first two months so all of these appointments are going to stay relatively similar uh, with a few differences so with every appointment, you're going to get the same usual checkup. They're going to check the baby's weight. They're going to check the height. They're going to check the head circumferences. You know, how often is baby wetting the diaper? How often is baby pooping? Uh, what's the color? What's the consistency? Um, how are they eating? Check in the umbilical cord area. And of course, if you did get the circumcision for your baby boy, they're going to check the circumcision area uh, just to make sure everything's healed properly. And at the end of all of this, or maybe even before, they're going to give you an opportunity to ask all these questions. And if they don't, interject and be like, hey, I've got a question about these different things. Uh, these appointments are here not just for the doctor. They're really here for you as a parent to give you peace of mind and to know what's going on with your child. So where they're going to differ is that on the two to four day old appointment and the two week appointment, um, for our case, our baby was premature. So what they did, they took blood work to test him for jaundice. Um, so that happened on both those first two appointments and on the second one they did prescribe our baby uh, vitamin D drops and that was because of precautionary stuff for the jaundice um, but they said if it's not working out because it didn't work out in our case it really made his poop super hard and it just didn't it didn't work out great so their alternative was you know put him next to a window where there are sun rays coming in and, and let him get his vitamin D that way or even just walk around with him outside of course don't let him bake but get, get him out and about, that way he can absorb those uh, sun rays. And lastly, the biggest change between all of these three appointments is going to be your two-month appointment. And that's because your baby's getting all of its vaccines that day, um, its first round at least. At the hospital, whenever the baby's born, yes, you did get a vaccine, but this is where you're getting the bulk of it all. So just keep that in mind. Try not to be too apprehensive about the trip for the vaccines. Um, in our case, you know, he got them. He cried for maybe a minute, but my wife was able to calm him back down and he went right back to sleep. So don't be too apprehensive, just go with it, you know, comfort your child, but uh, take it day by day and enjoy these appointments. And that's gonna cover all of our appointment stuff. So we're just gonna roll right into the milestones. So as you can see right here in the first month, uh, he covered tummy time, of course he hates tummy time, but we were able to do that and it's just to build that neck stabilization, that strength and that neck control. Um, and while we were doing this, you can see uh, that she wrote here on the back that he can turn his head from side to side. Just whenever we were making noise on one side of his head, he would turn it to listen, turn it to see what's going on. So that was really cool. And then in the second month, he progressed to a tub bath instead of being in the sink. And then he went from sleeping in his bassinet into his crib. And now he's rolling from his tummy to his back and from his back to his side. And then here we also have on the back just some cool things that we have to remember by, you know, uh, he sneezes loud like me, or he's, he's a spit up monster, or, you know, he loves to suck on his fingers. We call him doodle or buck. It's all of these cool things that you can have on these cards. These are a good amount of memories that you can have recorded just on these cool little cards. And she also uses them as little props for his month pictures. You know, you can see right here. You can see right here, she's got him right there on the card. You can see the significant change that he's had. And these are memories that we're gonna have because she did write them on these cards and she added these Polaroid pictures into her cute little notebook that she's thrown together for our kid. 
So just make sure that you guys do find a good way to keep track of his progress and the memories that y'all are making. And I do highly suggest something like the cards or a scrapbook or something like that, just to keep record of all of these awesome things that your baby and your family is doing together. So I want to talk about family that's going to be coming to visit. Uh, how long should they be visiting? When should they be visiting? And what expectations you guys should be having or can be having of the family that's coming to visit. So the answer to all three of these questions is actually quite simple. The deciding factor for these three questions should be between you and your spouse only. And that's it. As soon as y'all come up with your own answer, that's the only opinions that y'all need. That's the answer that you guys should be sticking with. As long as you two agree on when and what you guys are expecting from your family and what you want from your family, then that's all you're going to need. So the expectation is usually everyone comes to see the baby as soon as the baby's born. Don't feel obligated to, to follow that expectation. That shouldn't be something that shouldn't be the norm. You know, it's great if you want your family there, and it's great if they want to come. But just know you're not obligated to that. You know, the, the following weeks after a baby is born is incredibly stressful. There's a lot going on. It's chaotic. It's, it's you're trying to get into that routine that we talked about. So just know that the following weeks after, after birth has happened, your focus should be completely on your partner and your baby. For example, my wife still felt overwhelmed and we made our families wait at least a week. So please just focus on your new life. Focus on your brand new little family that you have right there. Focus on taking your time and to getting adjusted to this new life. All of those people that love you and that want to come see the baby, they're going to be happy for you and they're going to be plenty understanding and they should respect your wishes. When all is said and done, you need to make sure you're doing what's best for you and your spouse and your little baby. This is where we're going to wrap up our video for today. So if you did enjoy this video, please give us a big thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe. And of course, please check out all of our other videos. We've got some here. We've got one here. And of course, subscribe right here. Uh, it would mean a whole lot to me. Help the channel grow. I really hope you guys got some good information out of this video. But I just want to thank you all for watching. And I'll see you all next time.